video is part two of the nervous system, and it will be looking at how the nerve impulse is propagated down the length of the nerve. This shows the idea of membrane potential. We understand those two words, membrane, cell membrane, potential, could do something. And so in this case, it shows the charges of the two ions that we're primarily going to be dealing with, sodium and potassium. And so notice on the outside of the cell, there is more sodium. And on the inside of the cell, there is more potassium. Due to this, we say that the outside of the cell is more positive, has a more positive charge, and that the inside of the cell has a negative charge or a less positive charge, if you want to look at it that way, because some people say, well, look, there's potassium, it's got a positive, it should be positive. There are these other proteins, this A minus stands for anions that are on the inside and they produce this negative charge and produces this concentration gradient of ions. However you want to look at it, we're going to say that the outside of the cell is more positive, the inside of the cell is negative, and so because of this, there is this gradient that exists. In this case, it's not a concentration gradient in that you have more of a solute on one side and less on the other. In this case, you have what's called a charge gradient. Positive and negative like each other, and so there exists then this gradient between them. They want to match up, but they can't, and so the cell kind of exists in this state of being able to do something, but not currently doing anything. And we call this state that the cell is in the resting potential of the cell. It's kind of like a mouse trap. A mouse trap that has been set is at rest, meaning it's not currently doing anything, but it has the potential to do something. Another concept that we need to go over before we talk about how the nerve impulse works itself is the concept of sodium and potassium pumps. This is not two separate structures. It's one structure called a sodium potassium pump, and it pumps the sodium into the cell and potassium out of, I got those mixed up, pumps sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. Now, because I use the word pump, we're talking about active transport. Sodium is actively going to be pumped out of the cell. Potassium is actively going to be pumped into the cell. And what this does is it establishes that resting potential. After the nerve assist, after the nerve has fired, this resting potential is going to be reestablished by the sodium potassium pumps, and this is going to require ATP to do that. It's important before we get to the next step. A lot of times this graph is going to be used <coughs> to show the potential of a cell the membrane potential of the cell. And so this shows you here that the current membrane potential is negative, meaning the inside of that membrane is, is, is negative, more negative than the outside. And something has to occur in order to stimulate that nerve, just like the mousetrap. The mousetrap is currently set. In order for the mousetrap to go off, it doesn't go off on its own. Uh, the mouse is to come by and set it, and that's where you see it here at the top, this stimuli. Now, the stimulus can be one of two things. It could be sensory input from the outside world, which we'll talk more about later, or it could be another nerve. It could even be the fact that this is an axon, and just the portion just down the way from the this current system that we're dealing with, kind of like if you were to... Um, shake a rope and the rope, the end that you're shaking is currently acting and that's going to cause the next section of rope to shake and then that's going to cause the next section of the rope to shake and so forth. And so this stimulus is going to either be, is either going to be the 
sensory from the outside or the rest of the nerve that has been activated causing that to be stimulated. When that occurs, when that stimulus occurs, there's going to be a change in that membrane potential. And so here, I'll show you kind of what we're talking about. This is a nerve. And on the outside of the nerve, there's going to be some sodium ions. And on the inside of the nerve, there's going to be some potassium ions. This is the nerve at resting potential. We've talked about that resting potential. The nerve is going to be acted upon by some sort of stimulus. It's resting potential. And when it is acted upon by that stimulus, it's going to cause the membrane to depolarize. So whereas before the outside was positive, the inside was negative, that stimulus is going to cause sodium to go into the cell. How does it go in? It diffuses. There's more sodium on the outside than there is on the inside. It diffuses. And then notice what happens to the charges. They're going to flip. This is called depolarization. This depolarization, to go back to this chart here, is going to be shown by the charge increasing going to this spike, as you can see it's often called, and it's going to depolarize at a pretty rapid rate. Now, just like a mouse trap, the mouse has to strike it with a certain amount of force. If the mouse is careful enough, it can actually eat the cheese without the mouse trap striking. In the same way, the nerve can be stimulated only so much so that it doesn't really go. It just kind of halfway goes. This is called the threshold. It has to reach this threshold right here in order for the nerve to actually fire, in order for the nerve to actually complete this action. Once it reaches the threshold, that action is called the action potential. The action potential is just another name for the nerve impulse itself. Once this threshold is reached, the nerve itself will fire, causing the action potential, stimulating the next section of this nerve. And so that will continue on. Now, what has to happen in order to reset the nerve? Well, you can notice from this picture what's going on. Well, it's going to go back down. So in order for the charge to go back down, some of these positives have to leave the inside of the cell. And so what's going to happen in order to cause that? Potassium is going to leave the inside of the cell. This process is called repolarization. Now for repolarization, this potassium is going to leave the cell to return the nerve back to the resting potential. It's reestablishing the polarity that was there. And now, in order to go back to resting potential, the sodium potassium pumps are going to pump sodium out and potassium in to get back to resting potential, thus reestablishing those charges. So just to go over that quickly again, the nerve is stimulated, the sodium is going to go into the cell, that is depolarization. In order to repolarize the membrane, potassium is going to go out, and then sodium potassium pumps pump potassium in and sodium back out to reestablish the resting potential. Now, there is something here. See, so notice how the, the membrane is actually overpolarized, or what it's called hyper. Polarized. It's hyperpolarization. 
And this, the idea behind this is there's an excess pumping out of potassium, and the cell will pull some back in. This is just this is a necessary step in order to reestablish the resting potential, so that that concentration gradient exists, or that that um, charge gradient exists. And during this time, no other impulse can be can be established because the cell is refixing itself. It's kind of like the mouse trap is incapable of killing another mouse while you're resetting the trap, so to speak. Now, a couple other terms associated with this. One of them is saltatory conduction. Saltatory conduction is just a term used to refer to the nerve impulse actually hopping over these pieces of myelin sheath. This swan cell here is creating the myelin sheath, and the nerve impulse actually hops over those sections of myelin sheath. Why is that? Well, the myelin sheath is highly nonpolar, and so the nerve impulse needs polar, just like a, a wire needs metal. It can't travel through plastic, thankfully, or we would all be shocked all the time. And so, in order to not travel through this nonpolar substance, it actually hops the sections and meets in these little nodes, these little center nodes called nodes of Ron VA, and hops over them. This is why the nerve impulse can travel so quickly. Another term for the nerve impulse traveling is called propagation. I always think of propaganda, you know, this, the traveling of information. <clears throat> well, propagation is the traveling of the nerve impulse. The simplest pathway in the body for this is called the reflex arc. And a reflex arc, the simple definition for a reflex arc is when the nerve impulse and when the nerve signal sensory input is integrated in the spinal cord. If the brain doesn't think about it, it doesn't ever get to the brain, it simply integrates in the spinal cord and then the motor neuron acts appropriately. And so this is like, you know, when the doctor hits your knee and your leg kicks, you can't stop that from happening because it's not something that gets your brain to be integrated.